Guys, we'll come on to the statement the, the club have issued today shortly. But I've got this opportunity, the two of you sitting next to each other. I always want to ask. So Stuart, what's it like having Dave on board as vice chairman? And be honest. Well, maybe if Dave wasn't here, the answer might be a wee bit different. But uh, I'll be very diplomatic today. Steady. No, I, I, I think it's... Uh, maybe most people out there don't appreciate just what's, what's involved in being chairman of a football club. It's a big responsibility. And if we look ahead the next sort of three to five years and the challenges that are there for us, it's not just to move the club forward and make sure that we stay up there successful. We have a massive project to deliver in the, the, the new stadium. So to have somebody like Dave alongside us is great in many respects and I, I suppose first and foremost you know having Dave uh, he's I think everyone knows his passion uh, for the football club that's a great start but he also brings a great deal to the board he's uh, had the experience of operating lots of different boards he brings some real additional business experience to our board, particularly in the sales and marketing front. And I think the, having someone there that can share the burden over the next three to five years is going to be uh, great for me. And I think the good thing is that uh, as far as the, the vision and aspirations that we've got for the club, Dave and I are very much aligned in that front and strangely enough I actually w like working with them so we'll get on pretty well. Uh, Dave, I think that was quite diplomatic. Tell us a wee bit about your, your relationship with Stuart. Well it, it goes back um, 20 years now you know and so and obviously I had a, a, a time at the club where we were kind of challenged financially well all the clubs had um, potentially invested ahead of, um, you know, TV income being more than it ended up being. But, um, and so kept in touch uh, over the years, been a kind of a friend of the club. And really when we sold our major business in the States just over three years ago, we took about 18 months conversation, really just uh, uh, but getting back involved to help the club and I should have realised that, you know, if I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound, you know, and, and you're kind of all in. But no, I, I think a, a good relationship's got to be based upon trust, you know, and we don't agree on everything, right? Uh, but, you know, the, as Stuart says, the vision and where we're headed, you know, as, as we've shared today and we'll talk about just now, we're all on the same page. And... It's, I think it's going to be important for the, the fans to see what that vision is as well and, and kind of give us feedback and, and adjust. But, no, I, I enjoy working with Stuart. I'm based in the States. I've got a day job like Stuart. He's running a big uh, business, and um, I'm back wrapped involved in a software business as well. But, um, no, I, I think trust is the key thing and surrounding yourself with really good people. You know, I think that's, that's the recipe, and we've got some really good people at this club. Dave, being in Atlanta, is that a challenge? Or nowadays with technology and that, it's, it's not, I mean, can you still speak to everybody day to day, that type of thing? Well, I think it's not a challenge for me. me it's probably a blessing to Stuart and the rest of the guys, because um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm only over. Actually, I worked out, I've actually flown 180,000 miles since I rejoined the board gone back and forth. It's really, it's but not an issue. Most of these have been going away on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you, Stuart, I can show you the British Airways uh, statements. Um, Non-chargeable back to the club. No, and actually that's a, a really good point that some of the fans ask is that none of the non-executives, nobody takes fees from the club, expenses, um, you know, and actually the board contributes quite a bit to the uh, each year in terms of ticking boxes, etc. But that aside, um, I enjoy uh, the involvement because it allows me to, I've got the family stuff, I've got my software business, 
I've, we've got the football club and I just kind of enjoy, I enjoy the mix and the challenge. And uh, we're in a really good place as a club and with video conferencing, I mean, we can jump on, you know, whether it's mainly Rob Wicks and I working on the commercial side um, or on the phone anytime we want. So I think we were concerned a bit about it when we started, but I, I go on the screen there in the boardroom here for, 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 uh, for, the, for the board meetings. And there's a little funny story because I did actually get up from my office in Atlanta and head out. And when I came back, I heard this howling of laughter. And um, it turns out that my dog had jumped up on my chair and was on the big screen. And Stuart's response was, Dave, just you stay away. The dog's given us more information, <laughs> better information. Yeah. So, no, I think it, it, it works well. And I enjoy the balance of being in the States and here. Guys, on to the, the statement that was issued by the club today. Can I just start by asking, this, what was the reasons behind it? Really, I, I, I suppose maybe threefold. Um, I think first and foremost, to just remind everyone the success that's been delivered over the last six years, the, the progress we've made. I think it's very easy to start taking things for granted, but uh, under Derek, you know, we've experienced six years that this club hasn't seen probably since Sir Alec left us. Uh, so that was the first note to, to just sort of summarise the success there's been. Uh, that gives us a platform to start to build future success on, on the back of. And I think the second thing was really to try and demonstrate clearly to our fans and all our other stakeholders out there that we want to be more open and transparent with them to make them much more aware of what's going on within the club on an ongoing basis, and also to share in the aspirations we've got for the club going forward. And the third, I think, is to try and provide that better platform where people feel more involved, that they are in a position to bear influence in what we're setting out to do going forward. And certainly the the, the finalising of the design for the new stadium uh, will be one of the major things that we'll embark on in the coming months, so that we want to, to get that participation in that. There'll be a full programme of consultation, and hopefully at the end of the day, the fans will feel it, it's our stadium as opposed to something that's just been designed remotely from them. So we'll come back to the stadium in a minute, but Dave, just your thoughts on the statement. It was very much agreed by everybody in the board, wasn't it? Well, I mean, I think it's uh, it's been agreed by and been um, feedback by all the management. The statement itself comes from everybody at Pitodri. And, you know, I think what's really important, as Stuart touched on, is this transparency. Because there are lots with social media these days, people thinking that, you know, 30% of the funds from Aberdeen and Airbnb siphoned off here and there. This is an opportunity for us to basically explain why we've done these things and what's happening to these programmes, for example. But at the end of the day, in the club, we're all fans in the club, most of us for a lifetime, right? And we want success as well. And I think that it's not a case of, I sometimes feel with football clubs, or we feel that it's a case of the club and the fans. We need to be in this together. And that transparency and sharing of what we're doing, why we're doing things, and getting feedback, I think will, um, is, is, is a positive thing for football in general because we can't do this without the fans. So we've talked about a fans-first approach that we're going to embrace and are embracing it at Aberdeen. And so that was really the kind of ethos behind this was, look, there's some information here, some information there. You know, what are we standing for? What are we looking to do with this new stadium? Um, you know, uh, it's just touched on the consultation. Um, you know, what about investment in the first team? Has that been held back, for example, because of this, that, the other? I mean, when we pulled the data together, it was amazing looking at it, right? The six years, pull the data together. Because of the success on the field we've had principally, we have doubled our turnover 
We've gone from seven and a half to over 15 million in turnover since Derek's been here. The football results, the semi-finals, the finals, the league positions, the European games have all contributed to that. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to have driven some of the commercial income that we've done over this time as well. They could kind of feed off each other. So it was really interesting looking at that. And the fact is we haven't just doubled turnover in the last six years. We've doubled the football budget that we're spending on the first team in that period as well. So this is an opportunity for us just to share with all our stakeholders what's happened, why it's happening. It's factual information. And I just think that will be helpful to our relationship in particular with the fan base. Dave, there, there is going to be some tough times ahead over the next couple of years. There's going to be some major challenges, but I think the key thing you're saying is we need to be open with the fans to explain everything we're doing, why we're doing it, and hopefully they'll, they'll get on side with it. Yeah, no, we've touched on, you know, we've made a statement there that we want to see ourselves as a challenger brand, and that's a bit of jargon, but it really just simply means that what we want to do is we want to challenge ourselves in everything we do to see if we can do it better, right? We've got our core... You know, we've got the football operation and we play in a league. We've got two cups and maybe Europa League. But commercially, you know, at Pataudry, we're landlocked here to a degree. We've got about 950 uh, variations of eating and drinking down before the game at the club. You know, we hope that's going to be 2,000 by the time we get to the new stadium. So what are the other things we can do? Well, for first of all, what can we do better to make the experience better with the inventory, so to speak, we've got today in the fan experience. And then what other initiatives can we put in that will allow us to try and level the playing field? You know, in a statement we say, and it's factual based on recent results, for us to compete with uh, Celtic or Rangers, Celtic, for example, over five years, we would need to find 250 million pounds in cash and that's just not kind of sustainable. But it doesn't mean to say we don't aspire to increase our income so we can invest in the team. So from that perspective, you know, we've got a number of initiatives, our DNA being one, and others that we are um, working on just now that we believe will be um, income generators for us. So we've set ourselves a tall order by challenging ourselves um, to generate, uh, consistently generate new income from new initiatives so that we can invest in the team. I was going to ask, I mean, they are very ambitious targets you've set for the turnover. Are they achievable? Well, um, I think so. Um, and I think the team kind of thinks so. But, um, you know, let's say we were, we're looking to go from 15, 16 million a turnover to 20 million in the next three years or four years or so. And, you know, obviously we're locked here on what we can, can do on a game day like we talked about. But there's other new initiatives that are out there. For example, our new training campus. The training campus that's there, we can host camps there. For example, bring, um, there's three million kids play elite soccer in the States. Many of them from wealthy families that would pay handsomely for the experience of their kids coming in the summer, for example, to to the Kingsford, uh, Kingsford there and get the experience of the culture of the northeast of Scotland, for example. That could be a significant revenue generator for us. Now, that's just one example. But what we do as a group now, right, the management team and as a will sit down, go through these initiatives, and then we'll take it from there and kind of prototype it. What resources do we need? How would we execute that? Just like we did with DNA. The Aber DNA initiative took us nine months with significant effort to pull that off. And of course, with 6,300 members contributing gross about 1.2 million a year. So we think it's doable, but at the same time, we know in moving to the new stadium that we've got to invest in the success of our football team. You know, on, on the youth development side, again, the data, Stuart, 4 million we've invested in the last six years on youth development. Our teams fly to Portugal, they fly to Holland, the youth teams to get that experience they need. And it's a good investment, but it's four million that's spent. And um, that was a bit of an eye opener, but it's valid to look at it. And so again, you know, in the statement that we made, we actually made a commitment two years ago um, and we've put about another million pounds a year into the first team budget from two seasons ago. Um, so I think we're in an enviable position. 
it is an aspiration to get to 20 million before we move. We think it's doable, right? Yeah, and I think the important thing is, you, know, you need to have these aspirations to drive everyone. And if it takes us a year longer or two years longer to get there, that's not overly important. I think what we've been able to do in the last six years is, is build real momentum within the club. And it's vital that we keep that momentum going over the next three, four years so that by the time we have every part of the new facility out at Kingsford, we're, we've got a team here, it's capable of capitalising and the benefits of that. And there'll be things that we'll be able to develop around a new stadium that we're currently not even thinking about. It, but what we do need to do over the next period is to build up that capability and capacity within the club so that we can capitalise that fantastic asset we're going to, to have down the line. And I think that's what the last six years is done. Now, we've seen the importance of a top manager driving the football operation because anything that this club achieves in the future is going to be driven by what happens out there in the park. And that's where we need to allay the fears of the fans that delivering the first phase of Kingsford or the second phase of Kingsford is going to steal money out of the, the football operation. That would be very short-sighted of us to adopt that approach because we wouldn't be looking, we wouldn't have the funding for the first phase in place if it hadn't been for what we've achieved in the football front over the, 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 the past five, six years. Dave, you mentioned the Youth Academy. Guys, how important is that going to be you know, in the success going forward? It's fun, fundamental, and you know, I think as Dave's alluded to, we are never, ever going to be able to compete with Rangers and Celtic cash-wise. But where we can be better than them is what we do in terms of attracting the best youth, developing the best youth, giving them the best opportunities to get into first team football. And the bet that we've got to become even more successful at is these good players that come through. And they won't all come all the way through our system. I think Derek has shown in the last few years our ability to bring in good young players at the right stage from other clubs and develop them here, provide them with a platform. The key thing going forward is going to be capturing the value of that player, the value of what they're, they're here and what they contribute to the team, and then when they're ready to move on to the next stage of their career, we get real financial benefit out of that as well. And that's where I think we have the best opportunity to kind of level the playing field as much as we can and be as competitive as, as we can be, both in terms of what we achieve in domestic scene and in terms of what we need to achieve in Europe going forward. And they've taken a lot of, it's been great seeing the likes of Colin McLean and Bruce Anderson, Dean Campbell, Ethan Ross recently as well, all coming in the first team. It gives the fans a real buzz, isn't it, seeing local lads playing for the first team? No, absolutely. I think, listen, if we look back on the history of this club, you know, um, to Eddie Turnbull and, um, and, and my kind of generation. I was a young kid then. I wasn't too old when Eddie was around. But uh, in the late 60s, and you take a look at the, um, you know, the late 70s, the, in the 80s, um, and other uh, the times the club has done well, we've had a really good uh, conveyor belt of young players coming through. You know, and um, so, um, you know, <laughs> that works. When Aberdeen have got strong number of youths coming through into the team, all the way back to when Martin Buchan came in, you know, with Eddie Terrible, Bobby Clark came up uh, for Queen's Park, right through to the Gothenburg team then. And you look just now, it's really encouraging just now to see the younger players coming through. And as Stuart says, you know, there'll be players like, like uh, Derek found and we invested in Lewis Ferguson. And that's where we can bring in, we, we can compete, we can bring in real value. And, um, you know, we get the benefit of these players playing in the team. And at the right stage, 
we can monetize their value and reinvest. And that, that's the, I think that's the, the, the key to it is there. So the youth side of it's critical. And, and by the way, the 12 million we're investing separately from, we've, we've raised separately from the, um, um, the, the kind of day-to-day -day budget with, with the first team, for example, that facility will attract players to Aberdeen, not just the youths that are looking at what club they go to and, well, where are we going to train? Well, it's Seton Park or the Barracks. You know, we'll have a state-of-the-art facility that is there um, for the youths to, to develop and to attract players that want to come to Aberdeen because as Derek attracts players to come to the club, you know, um, it probably is one of the things he doesn't want to share is where we train. Yeah, and, and I, I think it kind of adds even more to what's been achieved in the last five, six years. You know, they've, they've been able to deliver at level of success with very, very basic facilities. We are way behind uh, where most of our top competition in, in Premier League is. And as Dave's saying, you know, to have that facility, it's going to be a, a massive benefit right across the whole football operation. But it's, it's also going to be a massive benefit for the community uh, uh, trust as well and what they'll be able to deliver into the, the community going forward. And as we've said before, you know, having a strong community trust out there uh, being very effective in a wider community is a benefit for the football club down the line. You know, as we get into all the primary schools, the academies, that's where our future support comes from. And so for them to have that added facility, uh, it's going to enable them to take a step change in, in what they're delivering out there. And they've just done that. I mean, the community trust do an amazing job, don't they? It's going to be great seeing the way that they're going to grow with the new facilities. Yeah, it's an aspiration the club had, had for, I mean, 20 years ago um, with the trust. And I think that it's who we are. You know, we're a community club and um, family club, and it's important to give back. Um, the benefit of us having... 30 or 40 people plus volunteers involved with the trust is that we're reaching out to the community of Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire, um, you know, primary schools, so on and so forth. There's a quarter of a million engagements a year in the community, 50% football related, 50% non-football related, such as walking clubs and the Alzheimer's program that we have as well. And it's just been a real success. And for us, we have to look to the, look into the future. The kids that are in primary school today are our future fans. And we need to embrace that. And we need to engage with these um, younger groups. Because in 10 years' time, which isn't a long time, you know, they'll be 16, 17, 18, 19. And that's our future. Mm -hmm. So, but also, we're the community trust touches base clearly with kind of all walks of life in, in, in the city. And as we all know, they did a fantastic job uh, winning the European Club Association Award for Best Community Programme based on the, the Alzheimer's programme that's been uh, well publicised. But it's something, it's something we should be proud of and, and is the envy of many other teams. Well, I've got both of you here. Pin you down. When's the training ground going to be ready, <laughs> first of all? I know the manager keeps asking, but is it September? I think that's the date. Yeah, it, it's uh, pretty much on track. Um, the, the target was always summertime. Uh, this may well be a slightly longer summer than, <laughs> than we've experienced in the past. But uh, no, I, I think at this point in time, everyone's pretty confident that come... Uh, September, we'll be ready to hand over the, the keys to Derek. And, and that's going to be a, a massive day for the club. No, it's going to be a real milestone in the club's history to have that kind of facility. I thought we said summertime for me being in Florida. That gives oh. us still a bit <laughs> November, right? <laughs> We just did the a lot of the fans have been asking about how the funds for the training complex have been raised, so yes, we'll be explaining a wee bit about that. Yeah, and so... You know, one of the things that is important, not just for Aberdeen, but for 
you know, Scottish clubs is looking at, um, you know, again, particularly against Rangers and Celtic, how you level the playing field. And in our case, we've got significant capital projects, phase one, the training campus, phase two, being the stadium, are big capital projects. And um, there are people, including myself and, and others around the club, um, that um, will invest in facilities without necessarily wanting to invest and just putting money into, you know, speculating to accumulate on the, on the operational side. So the good news is, is that we have 100% generated the 12 million. It was 10, but we've really upgraded the facilities per our statement as Derek and in the, in the football team um, um, uh, uh, proposed. And the good news is, is that we've managed to fund the 12 million for the training campus completely separate. We haven't touched any money associated with the day-to-day -day operations of the club, 100%. And, you know, we're in a position, an enviable position where, you know, we now will own that facility um, and there's no bank debt. And Stuart, this phase two, again, is a realistic date, do you think, for the, the stadium being complete? It, at the moment, we've sort of penciled in summer 22 for the stadium uh, being delivered. Uh, we're currently assessing that just now. We, we've obviously lost quite a bit of time with the judicial review that stopped us from kicking off clearing the conditions that are attached to the stadium. Uh, the reality is it is going to take some time to clear these conditions. And it, it, at the same time, you know, we've had to hold back in a consultation process with the fans uh, that scheduled for uh, autumn this year. I think by the time we pull all that together, we may well find the need to push it back another year. But that's currently being reviewed and, 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 and it'll be determined in the coming months do we need to, to buy another year. Just finally, Dave, I mean, over the last 18 months, the, the club sort of strengthened the board level, um, executive, and also the management level as well with, within the club. A lot of things maybe the fans haven't been seeing. So what benefits will these bring as we go forward? Yeah, and so it, it's always something that evolves. I learnt a long time ago uh, to hire people with a passion to work in the business or the business I'm in, software business, for example, hire people that have a passion, but people that are better than, than you, than me in this case, in functional areas. And so the board has that kind of ethos of uh, an openness to investing. If we're going to give, grow our turnover to 20 million, and then with the new stadium, we think we can get it to another three to five million more because of it being a destination and the other things we can do. Um, to do that, we need the right team in place. It's easy saying we're going to go to 20 million, but we need a team in place. The great news is, is that we've got lots of good quality people inside the club, many young managers that want to, uh, you know, line managers um, that have uh, aspirations. And so what we've done to kind of bolster the operational team is we brought Rob Wicks in as our commercial director and we brought um, uh, Kevin McKeever in um, as our finance director. And, um, and that's given us the capacity to really take a hard look at the initiatives that will let us go to the next level um, itself. And so in order to successfully execute, you know, customer uh, or fan, fan support and fan appreciation, or our corporate clients, for example, you know, we need to be really good at what we do. And so we want, in order for us to embark upon these new initiatives, we need to have the resources in place to delight our, our customers, you know? I mean, on the board side, Stuart? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, as Dave's saying, we've got to be continually looking and planning ahead. It's not what the club needs today and, and, and next year. It's what we're going to need three, five years down the line and starting to, to make that real investment in the people now so by the time we get there, people are up to speed, we're getting the maximum benefits 
uh, flowing back out. Uh, I think it's maybe not always appreciated out there, there in the wider world, no. Uh, when you look back 20 years ago, how a football club was run and how it needs to be run now, it is just a totally different environment. Running a football club in any league is a major challenge. I think with the additional challenges we've got in Scottish football, if we want to be one of the top clubs, it's not just the management we need to run the football operation. We also need that top management to run the club as well. And I, I think over the last four or five years, we've made giant strides in that uh, direction as well. And I, I think we are pretty well equipped to, to meet the, the big challenges that lie ahead for us. But just, just, just to add, if I, if I could, I think the, the most important thing for us is, is, is our fan base. You'll get 100,000 people kind of globally are fans of the club, maybe more. And we've got 100,000 in our database that direct, we can connect with. And we can't, we can't do this without them. I mean, we're fans. I mean, everybody in the club, we're all fans. The hours that some of these people, people, uh, uh, team members in the club, they're not employees, they're team members. We're all a team together, but in is incredible. And, you know, when the fans hurt, we're hurting as well, if there's a loss or something. And we can't do it without them. And so really, uh, you know, part of this communication is us being more transparent to share the detail of what we're going through and why we're coming to some decisions. Because, you know, if we're going to raise the investment, we've got work to do to raise 50 million for the stadium, right? We think it's doable, but we can't do it without the fans. We're going to raise the investment. If we were to speculate to accumulate and just throw money at the football team and lose money, we wouldn't get the investment. When people are looking to invest and we look at the stadium and this opportunity, they're going to look for a healthy club that, yes, is competing well on the field, but not a club that is losing money right, left and centre. I mean, we just see loads of examples in England just now of 16 teams maybe spending a ton of money in the championship to get to the premiership and look at the ownership changes that go right, left and centre with it. You know, we, we, we don't want to go back to or have that as an issue. And the other thing is, you know, we've been debt free from a bank debt perspective since 14. So here we are, we've got no bank debt. We've built a new phase one facility that will be the Envy. It will be a fantastic facility for us. And so we've lots, for me, the cup is half, or for us, the cup's half full. And we just want the fans to be as excited as we are and to let them know we're fans too and we can't do it without them. It's exciting times ahead, guys, isn't it? And it's, a, it's a wonderful business to be in, isn't it? All, through all the ups and downs of the football, Stuart, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any other sector that sort of draws the passion into business that football does. Uh, that can be a good thing, but it can equally be a bad thing if it's not managed effectively. And as Dave says, we just need to look back over the last 10 years. Uh, we are one of the very few clubs. It's never going into serious financial uh, difficulties. We've come through very challenging times, but we've given ourselves in the last six years a fantastic platform there's a great future out there for the clubs. Uh, as Dave says, the, the club and the fans have got to unite. If we're able to do it effectively, we'll deliver this fantastic new facility. We'll be up there as one of the top clubs, not just in Scotland, but in Europe. And that's what our aspiration has got to be. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thanks.